long time ago in a galaxy not so far away. So welcome to another episode of In a Galaxy Not So Far Away, everybody. The Star Wars podcast featuring myself, Cody Smith, and my co-host, Brendan Long. Hello, hello. Hello. Well, that was way more professional than the first time we did it. It was. That was very professional. I liked it. That sounded great. Nice. Uh, So in this episode, we will be talking about... Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Yes. Yeah. So just to start us off, like, you know how everybody kind of has their list of where, like, you know, their favorite, their most favorite Star Wars to least favorite Star Wars? Uh, This one probably falls pretty low on my list. I'm not going to lie to you. It is. Well, I mean, it's kind of like with The Phantom Menace. Like, this is quite a bad movie. Like, yeah. it, as, as, as an objective, if you were coming into it as a third party, no idea what Star Wars is, if you were to look at this just as a movie and base it, you know, against other movies as you, without the context of the Star Wars series, you would say this is a bad movie. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I the, the, the sad thing is, is I think The Phantom Menace would rank slightly higher, maybe just above Attack of the Clones for me. I am the opposite of you, but oh, okay. I it's surprisingly I, I didn't expect myself to be personally. Um, but there's a few like there's a few redeeming features of this for me that I really like, uh, and maybe it has to do more with my interest uh, in Star Wars as a whole, less less the movies. Um, like there's just some cool stuff that's introduced in this one that I really like. Um, I. I- I, I do agree with you, and I, I, I just have to say that, like, it, I, I'm so split on this movie because, like, half of it is just, like, total garbage that is boring, and it's, like, that's so slow, and then the, like, last 45 minutes or something is so amazing and awesome. It's action-packed as hell. Yeah. You know? And, like, it's it's the action parts that really shine to me, and you're like, oh, that's awesome. You know, and then the slow parts are fucking terrible, <laughs> terrible. But but there are some lovely, memorable quotes in this, like the sand gets everywhere thing. Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> hilarious, yeah, <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, no, there's there's some there's some real real good scenes for sure. I mean, um, Yoda's a fucking badass in this movie too. Super badass. That's when we for this is when we first discover that Yoda is secretly a badass. Yeah, you're right. It's the first time that we see Yoda fight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we kind of knew from uh, Empire Strikes Back, I guess, when when he lifts uh, the X wing up using his force powers, and you're like, oh shit, like Luke's got nothing on this guy. So there's a bit of a hint there. Um, but then in this one, they kind of go full. Full, full force especially with the the fight at the end yeah yeah i love it um so actually i i, I just want to touch on something that i learned about the phantom menace uh did you know that queen amidala is like the body double who played uh the body double for basically uh natalie portman it was kira knightley no what no yeah yeah, the person who was like all in the usually in the fucking get up with the the face paint and the hair and stuff, it was Kira Knightley. I can't believe that. I mean, they they don't look anything alike, so that makes a lot of sense. But I'm surprised that it was Kira Knightley and that I could not recognize her at all. Yeah, I know. I I felt the same way. It, it's it's insane. Anyways, uh, back to this movie. Um, I I did discover. I thought that I just hated. Uh, like kid Anakin, but I hate fucking teenage Anakin more than I hate kid Anakin. I think he's so angsty. Oh, he's so fucking angsty. I hate it so much. Me too. And like, I, part of me says, okay, was this, was his attitude and general way of acting? Was that Hayden Christensen or was that George Lucas? Do you know what I mean? Cause George Lucas is the one who wrote all the dialogue. The dialogue is fucking brutal in this movie. It is terrible. Yeah. I mean, again, the sand thing, right? Like, that is, while hilarious, it is terrible dialogue. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I I think there's one thing that he says where he's like, 
the kiss the kiss that you might give me will turn into a scar or something like that and i just like it made me want to throw up in my mouth <laughs> you know but maybe maybe in the absence of george lucas's written dialogue and the storylines and everything hayden christensen wouldn't be a bad actor but i feel like he's yeah you're right teenage anakin is terrible Oh god, I, I I like the from the moment he like opens his mouth, I'm like, oh man, I hate you so much more than Kid Anakin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and he's so like uh, insolent towards Obi Wan. I'm like, you need to shut up. You don't know anything, <laughs> you know. Obi Wan's way cooler than you are. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So so much cooler. Yeah, like it's yeah yeah. I don't know. It, it bugged me, but I guess that's kind of the character development side of things, right? Like. He thinks he's better than him, and therefore he's gonna be the person who saves the galaxy. Whatever, blah 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 blah. Yeah, well, because he he even he even mentions it, I believe, when he's talking to Padme at one point. Yeah, he's he does. Like, I, I he yeah he mentions how he's even better than uh, Master Obi Wan or whatever. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Or sorry, Master Master Kenobi. I guess it would be. Yeah, I feel like oh, Master Obi Wan sounds right though. But I mean, uh, even the, even if the dialogue was terrible, I feel like the way that it is delivered is also really bad. Like, I think it's probably oh, like yeah. a double-edged sword of like badness. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Two two wrongs don't make a right, as they say, and in yeah. this case, it very much does not make a right at all. Yeah, yeah. There's just like what like the like the overly emotional parts. I feel like he just loses it, and it just like is too much or something, or it's just it's, it seems fake or weird. It's just I don't like it at all. It's way overacted, way overacted. But the strange thing, okay, maybe it is Hayden Christensen because I feel like the rest of the performers do not even approach that level. No, you know, like Natalie Portman is Natalie Portman. She kind of does her thing. Right, like none of the other characters really hit that. I don't know what the guy's name is who plays Darth Sidious, but he knocks it out of the park every time for me personally. Oh yeah, he he kills it. I like how uh, I like how Jar Jar has like a thirty second part in this movie, and it was like, yeah, okay, we did that. He was there. We understand you guys don't like him. He's gone now. You know. Yeah, yeah, but we just needed to like. It would be weird if he just didn't show up. Like, yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. <laughs> There's like, the, what the only thing I could think while I was watching this whole movie was like, I wish they would have gone deeper on certain things and then not touched other things at all. Kind of like the Phantom Menace, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I, I uh, like all the stuff to do with like the clones is really interesting and awesome. I think uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Super cool, and like ha- having having like Obi Wan hang out on the Camino planet. Um, and like do kind of like a little mystery subterfuge spy thing or something for like 20 or 30 minutes would have been so cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely agree. And like it, it also, it's the introduction of like essentially Bubba Fett, right? Which is obviously cool. <laughs> super duper cool. And Django as a character, super cool. That fight when they're out on like the, the launch pad or whatever, I loved that. That was wicked. Yeah, no, 100%. And he's like, like that, that's such an iconic scene where, like, Django Fett is, like, kind of flying in the rain and he's shooting down at Obi-Wan with his pistols. I love that. I loved it. So cool. Yeah. And I wish they would have kind of kind of explored the Kaminoans. The K- Kaminoans? Is that the correct term? I'm not sure. Um, I wish they, I, I wish they could, could have explored them a little bit more because, like, the idea of having, like, a whole race of people and their whole thing is like their contracted clone makers like that's just neat to me you know yeah it's it's it seems like the star wars universe actually kind of does that a lot with its alien species right because even in this movie uh there's the the bankers guild or something yes uh, on the dark yeah it's like they kind of look jewish which is slightly racist i think but (laughs) i mean that's more than slightly racist there's there's things to be said about Watto too you know i mean yeah yeah (laughs) and i don't think we're the first people to point that out (laughs) no but it's 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 just like it's weird that like each alien species is like just really good at something you know (laughs) yeah yeah it kind of it kind of like fits into that compartmentalization thing that like i used to love as a kid you know like you have someone who's special at doing everything and now as an now when i'm an adult i'm like 
less interested in that idea because it doesn't really reflect how life is. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I'm getting too deep. But um, when I was a kid, I absolutely loved that shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool. They introduced some really cool uh, new alien like species and races and stuff like that, which I find interesting. Yeah, the the entire like droid army section of vehicles is super cool in this one. Like the, the those rolling things that shoot out the bajillion missiles, I love that. Those things are so cool. Yeah, no, I, I th- those are like those are super cool, and like the. Um... Uh, is this did, was the Super Battle Droids in the other one, or is this the first time for Super Battle Droids? I do believe this is the first time for the Super Battle Droids. Yeah, because then you have yeah the Super Battle Droids, which are also cool because they shoot, they have guns built into them and also missile launchers built into them, which is insane. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Loved playing as them on Battlefront. Amazing. Oh yeah, they were the best. They were. I think they were my favorite. Uh, actually, because you could do the Droidicas too, but. Um... I think the Super Battle Droids were, like, the most solid droid unit, for sure. They were. They were a great generalist. Like, you could use them in any situation, and they were pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. Plus, like, the missile shoot was, like, top-notch, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, There was another thing that I kept thinking throughout all this. is like, I understand that the politics side of things is super important uh, as to how Palpatine came into power. Mm. But it's so fucking boring, and nobody cares. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, one hundred, one hundred percent. Maybe there would have been a better way to do it. I don't know what that way is, but there, I, yeah, it's just terrible. Yeah, I was actually, I was thinking about it as I was watching it. It's like because Jar Jar is the one who uh, employed like the the emergency, or at least moved for the motion to give Palpatine the emergency powers of the Senate or whatever it was. Yeah, he was. Which is kind of interesting because, like, the whole, like, it's... He's basically the one who gave all this power to the Dark Lord, like the Emperor, which is interesting. It is super interesting. I mean, the Darth Jar Jar thing comes in again. I, I, you know, part of me still thinks and hopes that George Lucas originally had that as his idea, and then because everybody hated Jar Jar so much, um, it ended up being the case that he was like, oh no, we have to pivot really hard, and then that's kind of where where the rest of the train fell apart. Even though I don't think it's true, I want it to be true. Yeah. Well, like, maybe, because, like, maybe that's why Count Dooku got introduced in the, the second movie, right? Because maybe he was intending to have Jar Jar kind of become the bad guy in the second movie, but uh, everybody hated Jar Jar Binks so much that they had to, like, just kind of come up with this bad guy. Yeah, it was out of the blue, you know? I really wish, like, even, like, had they somehow dropped the name, like, Master Sypha Diaz, or, or whatever the hell the name is, um, like, even in the first one, just a little bit to foreshadow it, to, like, imp- plant a little bit of mystery, so he'd be like, oh, I wonder who that is. It would be so much better, you know? Yeah, I agree, and it's like, because, and that, like I said, that kind of almost gives rise to maybe uh, the Darth Jar Jar theory and uh, George Lucas just doubling back on that, because, and then just coming up with this enemy that is really, like, completely from left field you know oh totally from left field like it's it was really strange if you think about it you know the guy who plays him uh christopher lee phenomenal actor love him amazing oh yeah yeah because he's 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 saruman (laughs) he is he is he is yeah um he he plays a good fucking bad guy (laughs) oh man he, he plays like the best bad guy you know phenomenal yeah I, I, yeah, I, I almost wish they would have had him in more places or something. Like, had him in the place of Palpatine in the first movie, and then have Palpatine kind of show up, like, at the end of this one, and you're like, oh, shit, there he is. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. These are all fan ideas, and they're probably terrible, but I still think it'd be neat. I actually think if Count Dooku would have taken the place of, like the emperor in the phantom menace you know what i mean so it like count dooku was maybe darth maul's master instead of the emperor himself that that's that's what i'm saying that's exactly what i'm saying yeah 
Yeah, that would be that would be cool because then it would at least like foreshadow this bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. We'd like give him some context for the second movie, which like he just has none of really. No, none whatsoever. Even if they like in the beginning of the movie somehow mentioned him, but it's like he just well, Count Dooku, like the the actual guy, just shows up out of nowhere, and they kind of hint at him with the guy who ordered all the clones, Master Cipher Diaz. But it's like, why does he have two different two different names? You know, like I don't know, just a, some, a little bit more. Yeah, and then you find out that he's he was Yoda's old apprentice and stuff, and that's pretty cool. Super cool. That's yeah. how you know he's gonna be a badass. Yeah, yeah, I dig that for sure. His lightsaber is awesome. I really like his lightsaber. The little the little curve it has. Yeah, I don't know why. I just like it. I think it's neat. I think it's because anything uh, that strays from like your standard lightsaber is really cool. <laughs> true. True. Yeah, because it's like you know we've seen we've seen the standard. Now give us something cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like Mace Windu is being purple, awesome. Yeah. Uh, the double lightsaber, sweet. Count Dooku's cool, but yeah, the rest of them are are a little boring. Yeah. Which sounds silly but it is staff lightsaber obviously amazing like come on amazing uh there was one thing i wanted to talk about actually was uh the sound design in this movie it's super fucking cool oh yeah there there there, i i i think i like there, there was one part that we were watching and like I don't remember exactly which part it was, but like the music was going off in this way. And I was like, this is fucking star Wars right here. You know what I mean? Like, this is like what it's about. (laughs) Oh yeah. There, there's a couple I can cite for sure. Um, when they're chasing the assassin who tried to kill Padme, um, like the, the noise that her car makes sounds so neat. Mm Mm-hmm. And then when uh, Obi Wan is chasing Django and he's dropping those bombs. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, and they're exploding in space. So sick. That was so cool. Yeah, you're you're totally right. Like I remember that. Like now that you mention it, it's like the way that it's like silent at first, but then it just goes like boom, like awesome. Yeah. I love that. It's kind of like the you know the uh the beginning of movies when it goes but like a bomb almost (laughs) yeah yeah i loved it i thought it was so cool yeah yeah um the the entire sort of island scene uh with anakin and padme gave me cancer i don't know about you oh yeah i hated that everything about it was just terrible so bad yeah so bad it's like I don't I don't care about this. I don't care about these characters. I know I should because it's like really important stuff, but it's just like I just don't. <laughs> no, no, not at all. And then he had like they make out and you're like, "All right, that's probably not great because he's not supposed to do that." Yeah. I mean, we all know what's coming in the end. Yeah. Um and then he has that random ass dream about his mom and like that's what spurs that. I mean, there's just like really no foreshadowing or context to like why these things happen do you know what i mean yeah it's just like stuff is happening yes exactly it's just like stuff is happening yeah well like like that whole story really sucks but then like you you want to know more about what obi-wan kenobi is doing right you want to know more about the clones you want to know more about geonosha and stuff like that because that's where all the interesting stuff is happening (laughs) yeah exactly exactly and like maybe again had they foreshadowed Anakin's mom dying or spoilers everybody um or uh or um like him wanting to see her earlier in the movie it may have made me care more about it yeah yeah the, you know yeah the whole thing's just kind of strange yeah I guess what do you, what do you think about at, like the whole thing with Anakin going and just like murdering all the sand people I mean I kind of loved it <laughs> I, I really did, because, like, there's there's a really cool scene. I think it's uh, right at the beginning or at the end of the slaughter. I'm not sure. And, like, the music comes in, and it's just, like, a, a neat little scene. Um, and I really think that it foreshadows, obviously, him turning out to be a total psychopath. Uh, I, I really liked that part. I thought everything leading up to the slaughter was stupid, yeah. um, but then him actually killing all the sand people was really neat. Actually, I think that there's... I, I don't know if it's that part exactly or if it had something to do with maybe 
uh oh no it was when they showed the giant clone army for the first time and they just subtly play the imperial march oh it was so good oh, amazing yeah amazing it was like foreshadowing through music it was just it's so cool i feel like again sound music no problems here you know what i mean it's oh yeah it's the other stuff that's not great the action was sweet oh yeah action was wicked yeah yeah it's just kind of like the the whole anakin padme thing was pretty weak honestly like the story could have definitely maybe used some work or something i don't know but yeah and again the, their their age difference is like it's so strange because it's supposed to be 10 years since he's seen her yeah. right and they had a 10 year age gap so let's say he was 12 is she supposed to be like 32 and he's yeah. supposed to be 22 yeah it kind of seems that way but she literally hasn't aged at all like maybe she looks a little bit more adult and then obviously anakin has changed like entirely yeah puberty hit him fucking hard yeah uh, it's it's so bad when he first goes up to Padme. He's like, "There's not a day that I haven't thought of you" or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a note specifically here that says Anakin's really creepy. He is. He's so creepy. <laughs> he's super creepy. Like he's when she's like, "Don't stare at me like that," and he's like, "Why?" And you're like, "Jesus Christ, man, that's rapey." Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, no. One hundred percent. He de- he definitely has a rapey vibe in this th- this movie. <laughs> A hundred percent, especially at the beginning. And even, yeah, even later on, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. What did you think, what did you think about, um, like how they ended up accidentally, uh, accidentally on the planet of Geonosis, like, and, and going through that whole like mining sort of factory sequence and stuff. Did you like that? Um, I didn't hate it. Um, I, 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 it's kind of weird with Star Wars is like they have these giant sized things that are you're like you're just it kind of leaves you being like why is this a necessary thing that they need you know what I mean like I get it it's a droid building factory but uh, yeah but why is it here why is it huge and like how is it how did they and why is that why does that door go to nowhere like yeah there's like some just like random things like that that you kind of see in star wars architecture that you're like why is that like what is that door's function if it just goes to nowhere and you like it's it's it's, there's strange stuff like that you know yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i actually what what did you think i was just gonna say i I liked it when r2d2 and c3po went through the whole droid factory that was like kind of more entertaining for me me too me too i i love that it was like kind of fun and lighthearted and you know, C three PO's a, a little bitch, and R two D two's a hero. You know, like I just, I, I really liked it. I, I liked that part a lot. I didn't like it so much with Padme and Anakin. I was like, ah, eh, whatever. I don't really care. You know, I know they're gonna make it through. But with C three PO and R two D two, I was like, oh, this is nice. Like a nice little fun side adventure. Yeah, yeah, and like I don't know. It's just it, it, it gives. Uh, it also gives C three PO like a little bit more animation and mobility for the first time in the star wars series yes yes which he desperately needed because that dude was rusty yeah exactly he doesn't just like shuffle around he actually you know is like hanging on to stuff and kind of like moving like a normal robot instead of just shuffling around everywhere (laughs) yeah exactly what what did you think about the reunion between anakin watto um his mom's family, like Uncle Owen and all those guys. Yeah. And, and uh, C-3PO. Did you like that? Were you, like, emotional about it? No, I wasn't at all, actually. There was, like, no emotions there. Me too. I, I wish they would have had a little bit more dialogue or something. Yeah. Um, it is cool that you see Uncle Owen for the first time because he is, like, the one who raises Luke Skywalker, right? So that's kind of neat. Yeah. I thought the casting that they did for young Uncle Owen and and young Aunt... What's her name? I don't know. I don't know either. Anyways, young Uncle Owen and his wife was really, really well done. Yeah, and even the the, the guy who... uh who's in the wheelchair or the space wheelchair or whatever the magic wheelchair yeah the magic wheelchair that was good this i i dig the story like you know i i I do like the fact that anakin's mother did kind of find happiness she wasn't just like a slave all her life she did get to like 
be free and like be part of this other family because her son her only son was taken away from her at such a young age you know yeah i I liked that too a lot and like the unfortunate thing for her was how how she went out in the end right but yeah sand people gonna sand people but you know like in the end like for her it was probably overall a pretty good life yeah exactly and I, i i do dig the fact that they allude to that and that she did have a good life and she had this other family and stuff like that. Yeah, and I don't... I think Anakin didn't even register that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he just saw his his mom die, and it was like, oh, you know, he didn't understand that she had a life after him and that it was good. It was just... She went from slavery to death. Yeah, yeah, because that's all he knew, right? Exactly. Or at least, like, that, that's all he knew of her, so... But it, it, does, it does kind of put, like, the sand people in this kind of, like, supernatural light because the guy's like, you know, we went out and searched for her with a party of however many and like two of us came back or something like that. Yeah, they make them seem like they're real badass. Yeah, but I guess they've always kind of alluded to sand people being kind of badass, like ever since like A New Hope, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I Side note, I like what the Mandalorian did with the sand people. I thought that, that was really cool, but that's different. And we won't talk about that right now, but I did like that. Yeah, that was good. I I, 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 to, I th- think I told you in the last episode that they do do something different with the Sand People, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, you did. And I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I, I have a note on my little notebook here about the uh, all of the monsters that they fight when they're supposed to be like, well, not sacrificed, but they're supposed to be, I guess, executed. Yeah. Like Padme and Obi-Wan and Anakin. Yeah. Um, the thing that I liked about it was that the, the sequence itself wasn't great or anything, but you just know that the Star Wars fandom is going to, like, pick those animals and then have, like, whole stories that revolve around them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and just and just making them canon like that, it just expands the universe even more, right? Because, like, those giant... Uh... I don't know what they're exactly called, but the fucking praying mantis-looking thing... Yeah, that bug, that bug thing. Yeah, that's like from the planet, uh, I think, Felucia or whatever, the jungle world. Oh, it is. It is, too. You're right. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, the, the, like uh, that's the, I got that, I think, straight from Star Wars Battlefront. So, um, but like, it's cool that, like, you know, you add something like that into a movie and it's just going to, like, compound from there and like build its own story almost yeah and when it pops up people recognize and they're like hey that's the thing that they fought you know like and it's just that's that's like really where the beauty of star wars comes from is that that immersive world building that i don't even think anybody saw like that i don't even think george lucas understood that it was gonna be that way do you know what i mean yeah no definitely and uh, honestly the the as soon as like the the arena kind of fight happens that it's it's all uphill from there in my opinion like that's like the kickoff of like the best part of the movie <laughs> yes I, I would agree a hundred percent the crazy battles the jedi versus jedi i loved it all yeah yeah um and like how i also really like that it, especially in this movie like maybe they don't i guess they kind of do it in the next movie too but they like the Jedi aren't these like invincible uh otherworldly beings, you know? So many of them just get slayed in this movie in that arena. Tons. Tons of them do. And it really kind of humanizes them for sure. Yeah. No, I definitely like exactly. With with in the arena you get to see kind of like the birth, quote unquote, of one of the coolest Star Wars characters ever with Boba picking up his dad's decapitated head um, <laughs> and and holding it up to his his face and like putting his head against it and it's like oh man right there that's why he's such a he's such a hard dude you know what I mean yeah yeah no a hundred a hundred percent and it's just like it's crazy that all the lines that Boba Fett as a uh, like as a character have most of them are done when he's a child in this movie particularly <laughs> yeah i know hey like how, what, does he even say anything in empire strikes man i think he maybe has like a line where he's just like a green or he's like i'll be right back or something like that you know yeah but that's it yeah yeah he doesn't say much <laughs> but it's kind of like it's kind of like darth maul he darth maul barely says anything and he's one of the coolest characters in the fucking whole series that's probably why everybody likes him right yeah maybe george 
Maybe George Lucas is just like ruining people with his dialogue. So the ones that talk less are the best characters. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you think about it, the best, apparently, okay, so everybody, the fandom, and I'm not going to say everybody because everybody has their own personal preferences, but the fandom as a whole thinks Empire Strikes Back is the best movie. And George Lucas had the least amount to do with writing it. Oh, really? Than any of the other ones. Okay. Yeah, it was his wife, I believe, and some other guy. I don't know who. Everybody agrees that's one of the best ones. One of the things about the final battle that I really liked was you, you kind of get to see, and they do this more in in, uh, in episode three, but you kind of get to see like the beginning prototypes of some of the most iconic Empire vehicles, you know? Yes, yes. I was I was going to bring that up, like the uh, like the AT-ATs. Yes, amazing. Um, I actually have one up on my screen right now. I'm looking at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like it's like the early version. It's like a six legged version of like the AT-AT. You know? Yeah, it's so cool. And the uh, the star De- the star destroyers drop everybody off. Love that. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool scene for sure. And also, uh, like, just at the end there, when everybody's fleeing Genosha, or Count Dooku grabs the plans for the Death Star. Oh, yeah, I love that. It's like that little hologram thing. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, which is kind of cool. What are those giant, few, like, I don't know what they are, those giant circle uh, battleships. Like, what were they supposed to be? I, I, I put, the ones that are taking off and that they, like, blow up before they... Yeah, die. yeah. I think they're... I think they're just like uh like trade federation like vessel type things, you know. Oh, th- them trying to escape and that's about it, hey. Yeah, I think it was just the people from the trade federation trying to get away. Okay. Or I guess it's not the trade I guess it's not the trade federation, but Yeah, well, like it is though, isn't it? And I don't even remember. I don't know what the collect the trade federation is those specific guys. Yeah, and then there's the oh the robot guys, what the hell was their name? like the techno union or something like that yeah the techno union yes 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 yeah and then there's the bankers and then the yeah and uh, the geonosians which are weird bug people again had they i wish they almost would have explored that more because that's a really neat idea right like this sort of collective union of like robots slash tech people and then the bankers and then the geonosians and the trade federation all coming together to kind of go against the the republic you know and and like i just thought that was like really they're kind of a rebellion in a way yeah um but i I thought that that was just a neat idea overall yeah no for sure and they they, honestly they they might explore it a little bit more in in the clone wars like the cartoon series i hope they do yeah um because I, I know that they, I think they get into like a lot of. Because basic, it's it's seven seasons. Um, there's there's like twenty episodes a season, and it's everything that happens in between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So I mean, Amazing. I'm down with that. One actually, one of the things I was thinking about um, was right when the movie first started, Anakin. Anakin and Obi-Wan are kind of talking about, like, all these little adventures that they've had. I'm like, man, I would love to see that as a series, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, 100%. I think that'd be unreal. Figure out, you know, like, it would give them a deeper bond. It would make you understand why Anakin's so cool, why Obi-Wan's so cool. Um, I, I, that would be amazing. It'll never happen, I don't think. But I just, that that's one of those things where I wish they would have dived deeper on it. Yeah, it's like definite. I feel like it's like too late for that story, you know? Yeah. Well, I think everything in the prequels is pretty much off limits now. Yeah, yeah. I do kind of like the, I dig that they kind of keep the, uh, basically in the second movie of every single trilogy, somebody seems to lose a limb yeah what's up with that i don't know but i i maybe because uh anakin loses his arm in this one yeah um you know luke skywalker obviously loses his hand in one of the most iconic scenes that star wars has ever known um 
Pro- arguably one of the most iconic scenes in movie history. Yeah, in pop culture for sure. Like in recent in recent pop culture, yeah, movie history probably. Like Luke, I am your father or whatever is like one of like even if you don't know Star Wars, you probably know that line. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean Amanda knows that line, yeah, right? Exactly. So I and I forget what happens in the the new the new movies, but I'm pretty sure somebody loses a limb, don't they? I feel like they do. Doesn't um um Ben? Maybe. Does he? I don't remember. Either, maybe to be maybe honest. somebody doesn't in the the new movies. Uh, I've blocked a lot of those movies out. I almost prefer these prequels to those movies. Um, maybe. I I think that the huh. I really liked Force Awakens. Yeah, Force Awakens was great. Yeah, but that was nonstop action adventure. That movie. <laughs> but I'm a little bit biased because that's exactly what I wanted that movie to be. It was just like a complete nod to A New Hope. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. So that's everything. I, but like, uh, I think that the I what is it even fucking called? The second one in the new series, Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. No. Yeah, is it the last yeah, Jedi? It is the last Jedi. It goes the last, the last Jedi, and then the rise of Skywalker. I think, I think that the last Jedi might be my least favorite Star Wars movie out of them all. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, I maybe after watching all this, I'll have a better idea. Um, last Jedi was pretty bad, though. <laughs> I remember when we walked out of the theater. Oh yeah. <laughs> We we walked out of the theater and we both looked at each other like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, well, we were we were with Jordy, and as soon as it ended, we both looked at each other, and then Jordy just kind of stood up. He's like, that sucked. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we were like, uh, well, like this was cool about it, and we like didn't want to admit that it was bad. <laughs> we kept trying to justify it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, Anyways, um, yeah, no, I, 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 like, the point when the clones come in for the first time with, like, Yoda and shit, and they just, like, save everybody was, like, super, super tight, I thought. Super duper satisfying. Yeah, and the cool weapons that, like, the cool artillery beams that they have that take down that ship are, is awesome, and, like... Wicked. Yeah. Actually, there was, uh, sorry, I want to, uh, while this is in my brain, this is one of the things I noticed, um, first, like, when, uh... When Obi-Wan goes to that lady who's in charge of the Jedi records, and he goes to show her that little dart, right? And she's like, or, or maybe he's talking about the planet, uh, Camino, and, and and she's like, the records, if the records don't have it, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, for some reason, to me, that just really struck me as like, the Jedi are arrogant, they think they know everything. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that really drove that point home. Yeah, and also, uh, don't cis only deal in absolutes there, lady? <laughs> That's a valid point. I didn't even think about that, actually. Yeah. That's a very valid point. That librarian or whatever, she was not She was not chill, it seemed like. <laughs> no, she was very unpleasant. Yeah. Super duper unpleasant. Like, Obi-Wan's just trying to figure something out. And, like, then he goes to a fucking uh, a class that Yoda's teaching with a bunch of little tiny Jedis, and they provide him with the answer that he's looking for. <laughs> Yeah, what what is that lady's job? What is she even doing, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, if a kid can do your job, then, man, you suck, lady. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. What are, what are you friggin' doing? Yeah. That's the first time we get to see the, the younglings. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad news happens there. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a sad scene. <laughs> <laughs> that's like one oh, of the, uh, that's a terrible scene when, oh, fuck. When Anakin walks into that place and like, they're like, Master, Master Skywalker, they're attacking or whatever. And then he just pulls out like the lightsaber just goes on. Yeah. And you're like, ooh, that's not going to be good. Yeah. that's a, Oh, man. That's a bad one. <laughs> super dark but uh, but anyways back back to the original thing that you were saying when yoda comes in with all the clones saves the day you're like hell yeah that's sick like how did yoda find out about the clones i guess obi-wan would have told him did he tell him yeah i can't remember yeah obi-wan told like he reported to uh i think it was uh yoda and mace windu and possibly that guy with like the the cone head a little bit i forget his name but yeah yeah um but I think he like kind of reports to them. And he's like, they were ordered by uh, Master whatever, um, Sifo Dyas, 
and I guess Yoda might know who that is, though, right? Because he was... Uh, he was his apprentice. Yeah. So, and maybe that's why Yoda is the one who goes to Kamino to, like, gather the clone army. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I, that, that, this is me just completely spitballing. But. No, no. I think that that's right. Uh, I was just thinking about how they introduced Count Dooku, who is uh, not a bad villain, not as good as Darth Maul. No. But he, they introduce him, and he's kind of neat. And then they just off him in, like, the first 30 minutes of the first movie, or the third movie. Okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He was, like, like it's it's kind of crazy that, you know... Both Anakin and Obi Wan could not take Count Dooku. It is kind of crazy. You would think they would be able to, right? Yeah, but and then yeah, and then like with the 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 two lightsaber fighting, that was kind of cool though. That that scene when Anakin's fighting with the two lightsabers, I really liked that. And like it's all in in the dark and they're flashing all over the place. I, I liked that whole end fight scene between everybody. Yeah, especially when Yoda and Count Dooku have like the. The force, the force dick measuring contest. I love that. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. And Yoda's just like, my dick is obviously bigger than yours, Count Dooku. <laughs> yeah, and then we get to see Yoda throw down. Yeah, and you're like, damn. No, wait. Do, yeah, we do this time. Yeah, yeah. And I, fucking I, sick. I, I love how I love how Yoda comes hobbling in on his fucking cane, and then when he pulls out his lightsaber, he's flying through the air and doing flips all over the place. It's so cool. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. You're like, oh, man, this dude knows what's up. Yeah. Count Dooku. Yeah. I, again, I'm kind of sad they just dropped him. I feel like they fucked up all the... Like, other than... Well, they fucked up Darth Maul by not letting him be in more movies. Yeah. But they kind of fucked up on most of the villains. Other than maybe Sidious, because he's been present the whole time. Yeah, he's like the only one that was... And obviously Darth Vader is one of the most iconic villains in the entire universe i think but yes yes uh, sorry i should establish that i'm talking only about the oh, prequels only about not the prequels, okay. n- yeah not about the main movie series i mean darth vader's darth vader i can't i'd suck his fucking metal dick if i could you know yeah and i mean the prequels are basically just the origin story of darth vader <laughs> yeah well they are that that's the exact story right yeah um, but, but like, I mean, the, the villains of the main villains of each one of these movies, I feel like could have just been done better overall, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think that again, I think that, um, all of the villains like Darth Maul, uh, I know is present Count Dooku and General Grievous. They're all present in the Clone Wars cartoon series. I'm just getting more and more excited for the Clone Wars cartoon series than I am anything. Yeah. I, I mean, I've watched, like, maybe the first five or six episodes so far, and it's really fucking entertaining, I must say. Sweet. I'm totally down with that. More Star Wars content, period. Yeah, yeah. And it, it kind of, it, it, it delves into, like, it's not just about the Jedi, and it, it is actually about the Clone Wars, and, like, it's not just about the Jedi and the Sith's part in the Clone Wars. Like, some episode have, com- like, no Jedi in them whatsoever, and it's just about, like, a unit of clones or whatever, which is kind of neat. Amazing. I love that. And it actually, I, something that I, 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 I don't know if it happened in the movie or if it happened maybe in um, one of the, I think it actually happened in the, the, the Clone Wars, but they actually, like, really humanize kind of the clones. They Like, the Jedi don't just treat them as like these faceless entities they like really humanize the clones which i think is kind of neat that is awesome as these like disposable units you know yeah like that's that's wicked i I really like that yeah again the clone growing process i thought was really neat the accelerated growth you know it's crazy how they chose literally just Django fed to clone everybody with if you're going to choose anyone it's probably going to be him yeah right yeah super sick I, i don't know like i there's a lot of things about this movie that I quite like, and then a lot of things that I quite dislike. Yeah, I guess that's going to be the sort of sort of theme for almost all of all of these prequels, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, it's going to probably be in most Star Wars movies, except maybe like the original trilogy. I there's very little I dislike about the original trilogy. Yeah, me too. So, um, and actually, some of the the more uh offshoot things like the solo movie and rogue one and stuff like that are also kind of like that there's very little that i don't like about those movies as well a hundred percent i i really liked the han solo movie and rogue one and people shit on the han solo movie and i thought it was entirely unjustified for the record i i loved it it was space gangsters like it was so fun super fun super yeah. fun and like i'm i'm actually 
I'm really excited to talk about that. So <laughs> me too, me too. I'm trying to think of anything else from this movie that we missed or we should talk about. Uh, I, I mean, I think we like obviously you see kind of Anakin's uh first forays into the dark side, right? Like yeah, you kind of see it as kid Anakin, but when he kills the Sand People and he's like, I hate them. That's the real shit. Yeah, and you could just kind of see Yoda's kind of prophecy come true, right? Like when he first meets young Anakin, he's like, you know, uh, fear le- leads to hate and hate leads to the dark side or whatever. He has a whole way more eloquent way of saying it, but. Um, you know that it's on the way. Yeah, you see that completely play out as he kills all those sand people and he's like, I hate them. Yes. And his like jealousy about not being on, not being made a proper Jedi and still being a Padawan, and just his emotions kind of ruling all of his decisions, right? And him s- snapping at Obi Wan, and like you can see all those little things that kind of lead lead into him becoming who he becomes. Yeah, no, and then maybe that's maybe that like that is done quite well, actually. I would say I would agree too, and like. You know, ultimately, his motivation behind all of the shitty things that he does is usually pretty good. Do you know what I mean? Maybe not killing the younglings, that's bad news. But, again, spoilers, whatever. Uh, But, um, like, going and avenging his mom after she was kidnapped and tortured by the Sand People, you know, or wanting to be super protective of Padme and making sure, and wanting to love her because he wants to love people you know and i don't know like ultimately i don't think he's a bad dude but that's again a a discussion for another another time yeah and it actually just like basically he's a human right like those are all things that us as humans would do you know if like uh jealousy and vengeance and love and all that those are very human emotions and i think that what we'll see is like later i'm hoping I've read a lot of shit online about how really the Jedi Order was super flawed in and of itself by sticking to these super strict codes and not allowing people to express their feelings and stuff like that. And I'm hoping that's more clear in the third one because I I actually kind of agree with that. You know, telling Anakin not to feel was one of the worst things they could have done because all it did was cause him to bottle up all of his emotions and then blow his lid and become, you know, the Dark Lord of the Sith. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bit of an extreme reaction. It, it, uh, the, uh, actually, something about that should be mentioned is that um, this th- this movie in particular shows the relationship between Anakin and Palpatine. Yes. Yes. The very beginnings of it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, uh, which I, th- I thought was pretty cool. And they do it in a very subtle way, which like, you know... You know, if you know, you know, but they don't give anything really away, which is neat. No, they don't. They don't. It becomes way more clear in the next one, from what I recall. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's one of my favorite dynamics, actually, is between those two. Yeah. Because it's always, it, like, it's so, like, friendly at first, and, like, Palpatine is just, like, the master manipulator, right? Yes, the, the master manipulator. I don't even understand his full fucking complex plots that he's done. And I've seen these movies these movies a thousand times. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So it's like, it's, it's neat. And it shows the beginnings of that relationship, which I find really cool. Me too. I find it. Yeah. It's fascinating. As a character, Palpatine's amazing. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, the character of Palpatine is amazing. I 100% agree. Like, <laughs> just like so, so creepy, so evil, and just so well done. Yes. I just, I just wanted to mention that the, the fish guy in the, the arena, like that fish Jedi dude who's got all, he's like green and he's got all those tentacles. I love that guy. I know, he's so sweet. <laughs> hey, he's, he's awesome. That was another thing. Like, these, there's these Jedi that pop up, like the conehead guy, you know? Like, he's, like, a big character in the extended universe. Never see him again in these movies. No, yeah. he. You see him, like, he's on the council. He's kind of around. He has a couple lines, and then he dies in the next movie. Like... (laughs) Yeah, and that's it, you know? Yeah. But again, the the extended universe took him and, like, turned it into a whole thing, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah. And I think I think that they really delve a little bit deeper into some of these characters' backstories and like just uh, general, maybe not backstories, but just general existence in the universe in the Clone Wars. Uh, I'm excited for that. I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, and I also like the scene, uh, just another, like when uh, Jango, like that Jedi jumps up to try and fight Count Dooku and Jango Fett just like guns him down. Amazing. Uh, it shows that the, the Jedi aren't impervious, right? Like they can get gunned down, man. It's fine. It's going to happen. And, uh, yeah, I, I like that for sure. And Jango Fett's just a badass, too. Also, like, obviously the whole thing with Slave 1 and that asteroid battle and the bombs we already mentioned, but that, that was a fucking cool scene, too, for sure. Yeah, Slave 1 has to be one of the more iconic Star Wars ships. It's like X-Wing, you know, TIE Fighter, Slave 1, in my mind, anyways. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. It's just like something actually that I was I was thinking is what a fucking impractical ship you have to get in it and then you have to like sit upside down until you take off like what the fuck is that <laughs> It's very strange it doesn't make very much sense right but no almost none of them do <laughs> Like star, you know the star destroyer or imperial imperial cruiser or whatever this giant triangle those things are slow as shit. Yeah. Um, the TIE Fighter I really like, just as a thing, because they're cool. I, I actually prefer the TIE Fighter to the X-Wing, personally. Yeah, 100%. The, the, it's a cooler ship design, and also the, the sound that it makes is way more iconic, I feel. Oh, definitely. The only iconic sound about the X-Wing is the blaster noises. That, like, what, what, yeah, the, you know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. But the TIE Fighter, it's just, it's it's movement through space you, you you hear that and you're like that's a tie fighter exactly the like oh, i can't even do it but you know what it is yeah. it's amazing yeah 100 percent. yeah no uh so that the, that's all real cool i i think we have to just talk about like the the random secret wedding that anakin and padme have oh yeah <laughs> what good is that gonna fucking do like jesus yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I don't know. I would also maybe believe that you loved each other more if you didn't have weird conversations about sand and stuff. And like, Anakin <laughs> didn't give off major rapey vibes, you know? Like, I don't know. And then yeah. the other thing is like, in the third movie, they spend all their time together. They like sleep together. They basically act as a married couple. How does the Jedi Council not know about this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, also... Like, Master Yoda obviously knows. It's like, I don't know. I feel like Master, like, Yoda kind of knows what's going to happen, and he knew ever since he kind of, like, met Anakin, but he doesn't have the, like, power to bring about, like, to stop it at all. Or or maybe it's just, like, the ultimate Jedi thing to kind of let it happen, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, he, he knows he can't control it, and the... And ultimately, again, Anakin does bring about the balance of the Force. But again, that's another big yeah. thing. And, and he, you know, he, Anakin is going to do as Anakin does, and he is the most powerful Force user in generations other than maybe Yoda. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah, like you said, ultimately, he does bring balance to the Force. Yeah, exactly. It all needed to go... I mean, it, again, I've read theories on it, right? Like... And the theories say that, you know, at the time that Anakin kind of came about, the Sith were essentially extinct. And yeah. the Jedi were the major power in the universe. There was way more Jedi than there were Sith. Um, and so balance needed to be maintained. And that's how it happened. It swung from one extreme to the other and then back and forth. And that's how the balance is maintained, you know? Yeah. And like ultimately bringing balance to the force, like even though it's a Jedi prophecy, it wasn't good for the Jedi because the Jedi were the ones who were, you know, they were the ones who were overpopulating or whatever. It's like, even in the first movie, they say that they thought that the Sith were extinct. Yes. Yes, exactly. They were the ones who, it was their ultimate downfall, right? Yeah, and ultimately, balance to the Force, like, as we learn later on in the movies, basically means almost eliminating all Force users. Exactly. You have one one of each, you know? <laughs> Two of each, I guess. No, really, just one. Yeah, it's pretty much one. 
by the very end, I think it's just one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I don't know. It's interesting philosophical stuff in the Star Wars universe, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. And that's why we're doing this podcast, and that's why we can talk for many hours and have talked for many hours about fucking Star Wars. Exactly. Um, but I, I think I think we've kind of gone into number two enough now. I mean, it's not the deepest. It has great action. Oh yeah, it's just kind. Of, it's kind of there, you know. Yeah, and it has some some great iconic moments. Some of the best moments of like the the prequels for sure are in this movie, I would say. Um, but it also has some of the worst moments. Yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but hilarious ones. Oh yeah, hilarious, hilariously bad, and some just cringy badness too. <laughs> yes, but some sweet shit. I mean, I, I guess that's any movie, good and bad. Yeah. It is kind of funny how you're like, you're rooting for the clones and that shit, even though you know what they become, because they're so obviously just like proto stormtroopers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That is one of the things that I liked was how like the stormtrooper helmets evolved through time. I, I love that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's weird how you are rooting for them, even though you know they're ultimately going to be a force for force for bad. But, I, yeah. you know, I kind of look at the clones as like a they're just there and they're going to follow whoever they are told to follow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like a neutral force. They're like a tool. It's like the tool itself isn't bad. It's the person who's wielding the tool. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it though. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I think uh, we've sufficiently covered the attack of the clones. Uh, I'm excited for Revenge of the Sith. That is probably my favorite of the prequels, personally. Yeah. Uh, are we going to do the Clone Wars? Yeah, 100%. Are we supposed to do the Clone Wars now? Yeah, the Clone Wars is in between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Okay, that makes sense. I haven't looked at that list that you sent me in forever. So I will do the yeah. we'll do the Clone Wars first, for sure. Okay. Uh, I guess, how did you want to do it? Because there's seven seasons of The Clone Wars. I was thinking we could maybe do it either season by season or, you know, because they're half hour episodes, right? Yeah, half hour episodes. There's like 20 episodes per season. 20 episodes per Maybe season by season then? Because that would equate to about a, a hour or that would equate to about an, a movie's length in time. I would agree. And I think there's a lot of content that we're going to want to cover for sure. 100%. Yeah, let's okay. definitely do Clone Wars. I'm I'm stoked on that. That's going to be sick. Yeah, because it's also it's new for both of us too, which I think is going to be really exciting. Exactly. I'm I'm yeah. stoked. It's going to be sick. Yeah, and I hope that everybody listening also enjoyed this conversation and stay tuned for the next episode where we will be discussing season 1 of Star Wars: The Clone Wars. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too, man. If you like this episode of In a Galaxy Not So Far Away, why not leave a review? Whether you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts, ratings and reviews are huge. Help us to get through those Sith-like algorithms to reach the most amount of glorious Star Wars fans that we possibly can. If you would like up-to-date information on this podcast, check out our social media. You can find us on Instagram at In a Galaxy Not So Far Away Pod. If you're interested in some of the other shows that the Froggy Style Productions Podcast Network produces, check out their social media. You can find them at Froggy Style Productions on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. For more ways to support the show, visit fsproductions.ca.